Hi there. This is Chapter 7, Lesson 1 on Simple Kinetic Theory of Matter for the Singapore GCE O and N Level Syllabus. Now, in this video lesson, we will cover the following three points. We will, we will compare the properties of solids, liquids and gases. We will describe qualitatively the molecular structures of solids, liquids and gases and relating their properties to the forces and distance between these molecules and to the motions of the molecules. And the third point is this, understand that all things are made up of matter. Now, it is this very last point that makes it very challenging for many students who just started to learn kinetic theory of matter, especially those who have little knowledge about atoms, molecules of matter, it makes it really challenging for them. Well, if you belong to this group, do not worry, I will try to touch on this later in the video and I hope to help you learn and accept that all things are made up of matter. Let's start by looking at the states of matter. At this point in time, scientists have discovered that matter can exist in, in five states actually, but for the purpose of GCE O and N levels, we are only focusing on the three most common states which we, are, which we see around us every day. Solid, liquid and gas. If you are interested, you can google for the other two states. So let's have a look at these properties. From primary school science, you will have learned this. But let us just recap, right? Now, for a solid, we know that a solid has fixed shape and volume. It is also usually hard and rigid. It has high density and it is incompressible or not compressible. For liquid, it has fixed volume but no fixed shape. It has high density as well, but usually uh, not as high as that of a solid, and it is also not compressible. For a gas, a gas has no fixed shape and volume. It is also of very low density, and we can easily compress gases. So, what is a kinetic model of matter? Well, to answer that, let us start by learning that all things are made up of matter, and all matter is made up of tiny particles called atoms or molecules. Well, molecules is basically just a group of two or more um, atoms chemically combined together. Don't worry about this thing called chemically combined together. We'll leave this to the chemistry se uh, section. But uh, just know that um, some energy are involved in the formation of this molecule when atoms combine. Now let's have a look at a diagram to understand what an atom and a molecule is. In this diagram, it shows one molecule of water of a water molecule. Water molecule is made up of three atoms, one oxygen and two hydrogen atoms. The two hydrogen atoms are um, bonded to the O uh, to the oxygen atom by some chemical means. Okay. When these atoms combine chemically, the group of this group of atoms is actually called a molecule. Now, strange as, as it may sound right now, a small tiny drop of water can actually contain millions or gazillions of this single molecule. So, have you answered the original question, which is, what is the kinetic model of matter? Well, it is simply a model that states that these tiny particles, atoms or molecules, that make up matter are always in continuous motion. So from this point onwards, take note that the term particles here can refer to either atoms or molecules. So for GCE O and N levels, we describe the property of the states of matter in three ways. The arrangement of the particles, the movement of particles, and the forces of attraction between these particles. Let's start have by looking at the solid. Right? Particles that are in a solid state are closely packed together in a regular and orderly pattern. Well, if you look at this, you can see that they are packed in a very nice, neat arrangement. Right? And how about their movement? Well, although the diagram does not seem to suggest that, they, that these particles are moving, know that these particles are continuously vibrating about their fixed position. That simply means that these particles do not move around easily. Right? You just remain where it is at the bottom, 
right hand corner and it will just be vibrating around its position either sideways up up and down or even along the diagonal then how about the forces of attraction well the fact that all these particles seems to be in a very nice fixed arrangement and they are only able to vibrate about fixed position this therefore suggests that there are very strong forces that holds all these particles together all right so for a solid state we know that these particles must be held together closely by very strong attractive forces. Now, let us have a look at the liquid state itself. Well, if, as you can see, the particles in the liquid states, they are not arranged in a regular pattern, although they are still very closely packed, okay, as compared to that of a solid state. And know that as well that these particles are able to move freely within the liquid, sliding around each other. In other words, for example, if I have a particle at this bottom right-hand corner, over time, this particle can actually slide around and move and it may even end up somewhere here. Okay? And uh, since the fact is this, that these particles are able to move around and uh, they are in disorderly manner, this suggests that the, the forces of attraction in a liquid state is not as strong as that of a solid. But the fact that they are still very close, this suggests that these forces are still moderately strong. Now let's have a look at gas state. Okay, as you can see, for a gas state, the particles itself are spaced widely apart. They are very apart from each other and they do not have any fixed arrangement. In fact, sometimes we call this random, randomly arranged. Okay, so we can describe the state, uh, the particles in gas state as very far apart and randomly arranged. Also know that these particles are very free to move about at very high speeds. Okay, For this present moment, Brownian motion will just keep it out uh, from this discussion. Okay, And finally, the fact that these particles are able to move freely, very quickly, and in random uh, directions, and they are so far apart from each other, this therefore suggests that the forces between these particles must be very, very weak. It is so weak that sometimes we can actually ignore these forces. And uh, the term that we use here is that we can say that the forces are negligible between them. Now, let's have a look at these two diagrams. All right? Basically, these diagrams uh, summarize how the strength of the intermolecular forces and the relative distance between particles are like for the three different states. So if you look at this first diagram on the top, as we change from a gas to liquid and finally to a solid state, this suggests that the strength of the molecular force or intermolecular forces between the particles becomes increasingly stronger. Okay, So for solid, you can see that due to the very strong forces, the particles are packed closely together in a very systematic arrangement. And as we move towards a liquid state, the forces are no longer as strong as that of a solid. Therefore, you can see that the particles are slightly further apart and they are able to also slide around each other. So as we go to a gas state over here, we find that the forces are very, very weak. As a result, the particles of gas are free to move very quickly all around the place. Okay. Now, for this diagram, let's have a look at the relative distance between particles. For a solid, they are very close together. And as we move to the liquid state, the distance between the particles becomes slightly further apart. However, they are still relatively close. Okay? As a gas, we find that now the distance between the particles are very far apart. And these particles are able to move very, very rapidly in this particular state. So, we are made up of matter. All right? um, at the beginning of this uh, video, I mentioned that it's... It is um, very challenging for many students to accept that all things around us are made up of matter. It is a no wonder, isn't it? Uh, the reason is simply this. We do not see matter, whether they are atoms or molecules, around us easily. In fact, these atoms or molecules are invisible to our eyes. They are just so tiny. So, it makes it really very tough for students to accept this idea that all things are made up of matter. But let's try to accept this, okay? Now, by looking at this diagram, let's have a look at something that we are familiar with, water and ice. Let's start by looking at the ice itself. 
Ice is actually water in solid state. Notice how the drawing of the matter is like inside the ice. Okay, the particles of water which exist as molecules of H2O, each of these represents one molecule of water. All right, notice how they are arranged. They are arranged in a very orderly uh, manner with very strong forces that holds them together. And these particles itself, this molecule of water, they can only vibrate about their fixed position around here. Okay, now let's move on to cold water. Right. Compare the arrangement, motion and forces between the particles with that of ice. Notice that the particles are no longer arranged in orderly manner, slightly spaced out and are free to slide around each other. The fact that they are able to slide around each other and are not in orderly manner suggests that the force of attraction between the molecules are lesser than that of solid. Now let's move on to the warm water. Compare the arrangement again, uh, motion and forces between this and that of the cold water. Notice that there is no fixed arrangement as well. However, one key difference is the distance apart. Notice that the molecules of water in warm water is further apart compared to that of the cold water. This therefore suggests that the force between the particles in warm water is slightly weaker compared to the force of attraction in cold water. Now, how about living things? Yes, indeed, we are also made up of particles, meaning atoms and molecules. Now, let us start at the system level. This is us. We are made up of many systems, the digestive systems, the respiratory systems, and so on and so forth. So if you have to look closer at all these systems itself, each of these systems is made up of organs like the stomach, intestine, and liver. So if you to look closer again at what make up these uh, organs, we will find that we will be at the tissue level. So what makes up the tissue? Well, the cells, right? So the cells make up tissue. But if you to look even closer at what makes up a cell, we will find ourselves looking at DNA. And that brings us to the million dollar question. What makes up DNA? Well, as you would have guessed it by now, the DNA is made up of small, tiny little atoms. And uh, surprisingly, for living things, we are made up essentially of five different types of atoms. Carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and phosphorus. So there we are. Everything around us, be it ourselves, the plant, the table in front of you, your handphone, or the air around you, the air that you breathe in, made up of matter. So in summary, uh, for this particular video lesson, I hope I have helped you to learn to compare the properties of solids, liquids, and gases, describe qualitatively the molecular structures of solid, liquids, and gases, relating their properties to the forces and distance between the molecules, and finally the motions of the molecule. And I hope that I have actually helped you to understand and accept maybe, uh, even if you can't understand at this point in time, that all things around us are made up of matter. Thank you.